Okay, let's look at the fourth point, the fourth of our reasons, and that is to encourage sound monetary policy. I'd like you to just ponder this question for a moment. Here we have presented uh, two forms of currency, if you will. What I believe they both have uh, in common is the fact that they're both made based on a monopoly. We're looking at monopoly money, uh, which within the confines of the monopoly game is, game is um, the sole currency allowed. And then you have paper money uh, or Federal Reserve notes, which functions really as a monopoly in our current system, not only um, in the United States, but because of its status as world reserve currency, it's, it is the required or monopolistic currency for many transactions throughout the world. So what are the results of monopolistic monetary policies? Well, in the United States um, and elsewhere throughout the world, you've seen bailouts, um, stimulus plans through sending to the printer for a wagon load of money, essentially as the old colonial era legislator was uh, wont to do, and we still, that, still see that happening today under our Federal Reserve System. We, of course, have deficit spending, and deficit spending over an extended period of time is really only possible where you have a unlimited source of paper money or a money tree, if you will, that you can always go to. I mean, how many uh, individuals or governmental entities, be they state, uh, local, can year after year, decade after decade, spend more money than they, than they take in? It's just not doable unless you've got a fiat monetary system you control whereby you can expand the money supply and make first use of, uh, of those funds. And of course, we see artificially low interest rates, um, which we were just recently told will, uh, will be continuing for many years to come. Um, constant inflation is, is part of the whole picture. And let's just talk for a moment about the, the interest rates. Obviously, the U.S. government is one of the biggest debtors in the world, uh, has no interest in seeing interest rates uh, go very high at all because the monetary system is based on debt. There's there's these interest payments that have to be serviced and so you want to keep that low. But what that does, not only for the government, but for the population as a whole, is it creates a strong incentive to operate um, in a, to have a debt-based economy rather than an equity-based economy. So that uh, people are actually encouraged to incur debt because the cost of lending is so low. And as a result, we have a nation of debtors nowadays. Uh, we've got uh, debt levels, uh, personal debt levels are higher th at any time th throughout our history. Maybe they're a little bit lower now just as a result of um, kind of the 2008-2009 the wake-up call. But nonetheless, that incentive is built into our monetary system. And then constant inflation, this is actually part of the Federal Reserve's dual mandate. Full employment and and what I would call inflation targeting. The full employment aspect uh, oftentimes is not achieved, but they often do much better than their inflationary targets, um, in which results in the debase of the, the currency. So having a sound monetary standard actually encourages sound monetary policies and has an important ripple down effect on um, to uh, members of society as a whole and encourages saving over incurring debt. And so I think that it's a very laudable um, system. And we've seen this when the U.S. government was on a um, precious metal-based system that uh, debt levels were much lower than they are today. Much of the economic um, activity uh, which I'll talk about in a, in a moment was um, you know higher than uh, at any other uh, time throughout history um, was driven by uh, capital by savers who reinvested capital rather than incurring debt to achieve economic growth and development 
Well, let me just mention here that also, not only through the Federal Reserve, but also through our banking system, we're constantly expanding the monetary supply. Here um, we have an illustration of how a $100 deposit into a uh, Federal Reserve, to, to a bank within the Federal Reserve system can expand to nearly $1,000 in new money. That's created just by people borrowing uh, from banks. Because banks only have to maintain a 10% reserve, they essentially are authorized by law to create money when they make loans. And, and this has an uh, inflationary uh, effect as well.